Hey, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. Today's video, another haul video. Wasn't planning on it, but it was dollar days at the flea market today. Uh, I went to the flea market, and it's actually not my regular flea market. That doesn't open until next Sunday. This was another one I went to, um, and it was good. I mean, it was great. Uh, and I found this stuff that you see, and almost everything I bought here was almost a dollar. Pretty amazing finds. So... What the hell? I figured I'd show it off. Um, lucky uh, day at the flea market. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please uh, hit subscribe. If you like it, please hit subscribe. Check out my other videos. Let's get started. So uh, what do you see here? On CD, well, Love You Live, The Rolling Stones. Of course, I bought it when it came out. The day it came out on vinyl in 1977, and I already have this version. But what the hell? This is the best version of uh, Love You Live, the best version of The Rolling Stones, from the Rolling Stones records years is on Virgin. Um, those uh, remasters were amazing. And this is the Virgin remaster of Love You Live. I already have this, but it was a dollar. And it's mint. Two CDs. A dollar for Love You Live, the Virgin remaster. Even though I have it, what the hell? I couldn't pass it up. A um, couple other things. Uh, get your eyes out, you see, on cassette. Of course, I have multiple versions of this. Um, if you checked out my live album uh, video, and there's two of them, Get Your Eyes Out is, in my opinion, the best Stones live album and the second best live album of all time. And, of course, I have the original vinyl, and I have the digitally remastered CD, and I have the box set. But now I got the remastered uh, cassette that Abco did a great job on those remasters. And here it is on cassette, and it was a dollar. So how can I pass it up? In fact, one of my cars is really old, and the CD went, so I, I can only play cassettes in the car, so it works out. And in fact, with this as well, I don't know what's going on with this album all of a sudden. Breaking All the Rules by Peter Frampton is my choice of the best studio album Frampton's ever done, and it was a failure. I love this album to death. Here it is on vinyl. I picked it up when it first came out. Um... For all you people who like Frampton and you don't know this album, which is probably the majority of you, you are missing out. Uh, it's awesome. The title track is incredible. The album is recorded live in the studio, and it's got a lot of power. It's awesome. Um, the other day, I found it on 8-track, um, which I showed. This was in a previous video. So now today, I found it uh, same place that I had the uh, Get Your Eyes Out. Um, so I got the cassette of Breaking All the Rules. And, yep, it was a dollar as well. So I couldn't pass that one up. So there you go, Breaking Out of Roots from Frampton. What else did I pick up today? Um, this is cool. I'm a huge fan of Little Feet. I should really do a video on them. Um, I have tons of Little Feet albums. I have all the original albums with Lowell George, and, of course, that was them at their prime. But a lot of people forget, you know, Low, uh, Little Feet were not commercially successful with Lowell George. And even though Waiting for Columbus, which I think is one of the greatest live albums of all time, even that wasn't a huge success. The, the band broke up around uh, 81 or so. They reformed in 88 with Craig Fuller and Fred Tackett and didn't get a lot of commercial artistic respect, but they was their most commercially successful stuff with like, uh, what was it, Let It Roll, Representing the Mambo, really good records, uh, great records actually. Um, then I guess it was around, I don't know, 1995, they did something different and they brought in a female single named Sean Murphy and they released a bunch of albums with Sean Murphy and it was a great idea. Still sounds like Little Feet, amazing musicianship, but completely different sound with Sean Murphy on vocals and she's outstanding. And those albums are really good. And the first one especially was called Ain't Had Enough Fun, was a great record. Uh, what else did they do? Under the Radar, Chinese Work Songs, Kicking at the Barn. I have all of those. Um, and now Little Feet, what they've been doing over the last decade is kind of like what the Grateful Dead does and Fish. They started releasing their own bootlegs. Um, and it's on Hot uh, Tomato Records. And I found this one today. Uh, this is a double CD, an acoustic evening with Little Feet at the Ram's Head, really famous place. And this I paid two ninety nine for, and this is with Sean Murphy. Um, so a fully loaded two CD set, great track listing. I'm looking forward to hearing that. And then I also picked up this one for two ninety nine, another one on Hot Tomato Records, a authorized bootleg. 
And this is called Down Upon the Suwanee River, again with Sean Murphy on the vocals. Um, definitely recommended checking them out. Uh, Little Feet is an amazing band, even after Lowell George. Uh, lots of great stuff. And the stuff that they did with Sean Murphy is really, really, really good. So these are authorized live double CDs. And I got each one for $2.99. That was a good deal. What else did I get for a dollar at the flea market? Um, here's a guy that another viewer had been telling me. I got to get into him. And sure enough, at the uh, flea market, I saw this live record, the Jess Roden Band, blowing. Um, and there's the dollar, dollar sticker. I paid a dollar for this. Uh, it's in, like, mint, uh, mint shape. It does have a little cutout over there. Um, but there it is on Island Records. And... Uh, for a buck. So I'm looking forward to listening to that. That was recommended by a viewer. Um, I know this is not rare and not worth the time, but I'm a big fan of uh, Atlanta Rhythm Section, and here's an original pressing of a rock and roll alternative. This is the album that, of course, I had So Into You, which was a big hit, and I only paid a dollar for that. And this has that uh, it's three-dimensional cover, which is kind of cool, on Polydor. And then this is a band that um, I just love the artwork. And, of course, they were kind of like a Yes Sound-alike band called Star Castle. I think they had three or four albums. And this is the third, I believe, Citadel. And what the hell, for a dollar. Uh, it's got a couple of good tracks on it. I'm familiar with them. And there it is, also in great shape. So you can't beat it. Three of those albums for a dollar. And then the find of the day was this one. Now, this is an album I've been looking for for a while. The original version of Humble Pie's Thunderbox, uh, not one of their better albums, so I refuse to pay a lot of money for it, but it's the die-cut one, and there's another pressing where it's not die-cut. Um, kind of a controversial cover, but I love it. I think it's one of the hottest covers ever made. Great artwork. Uh, obviously, this is Humble Pie, Latter-day Humble Pie with Clem Clemson. Not one of their greatest albums, for sure, but certainly one of their greatest covers, and then when you pull it out, what you have is scenes of a, a woman on the toilet. So that's what's sticking through the keyhole uh, die cut. And here's a couple of women bathing. And it's in great shape. A&M Records. And I've been looking for this for a while. But it, when I see it in the record stores, it goes for like 20 bucks, the original version. And I found it for a dollar. So there's my find of the day, Thunderbox from Humble Pie with that great keyhole die cut cover. That's a great find. The only other thing I found today that's pretty cool is this thing. Um, and it's uh, originally was listed at 10, then he lowered it to 5, and I got it for 3. Cinema Sewer, Volume 2. This is Robin Boogie, and he does all this artwork. He did the cover. And it's right up my alley, and it's a mixture of really bad horror movies and some porn and roller derby movies and all that, what you would call exploitation, psychotronic kind of films that I'm a huge fan of. And he just writes and writes and writes and does all the artwork. And these books are like 20 bucks and not the easiest thing to find. And there it was, lo and behold, at the flea market. It's on Fab Press, listed at $19.95, and I got it for 3 bucks. So there we have it, folks. A good day, uh, dollar days at the flea market. Hope you enjoyed my haul video. Again, if you're new to my channel, please check out the other videos. I greatly appreciate it. If you are not a subscriber, please hit subscribe. Um, help my channel to grow doing this for two and a half years. I think I got some pretty good videos. You can check out the playlist. Um, and a uh, pretty good growing community I have as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe, stay healthy out there. And I will see you on the next video, which I'm going to do another uh, video, what I'm calling New Old. I'm going to do it right on this thing. I've been listening to It's a Beautiful Day for the last few days. Great album, and I'm going to do a video just on that one. So I will see you soon. Have a great one.